So in the spirit of Halloween, I decided to image a ghost in space. And this was a really fun project for me. Uh, I'm referring to IC-63 and IC-59 in Cassiopeia. IC-63 is the phantom ghost-like figure in this nebula region. And it does have that appearance. Uh, you can definitely see it. It is a very challenging nebula region to image though. It is extremely faint and it happens to be right next door to the bright star, bright blue star, Gamma Cassiopeia. This is the center star in the uh, W shape of Cassiopeia. Now, a lot of astrophotographers try to image this and they suffer from internal reflections within their telescope or their camera, and it can actually make the image, um, well, it can actually ruin the image, unfortunately. So it is a very difficult, uh, difficult target to image uh, due to its surface brightness, but also because of the bright star Gamma Cassiopeia being right next door to it. I was actually fairly lucky. I uh, didn't really suffer from much in the way of internal reflections, maybe a slight bit on the left side, uh, very, very minor amount, but overall um, the telescope and the camera uh, performed really well. Um, I'm using an Esprit 100 triplet and I have the QHY 268M camera and uh, a filter wheel, the QHY filter wheel, and I'm using Optolong filters. So the Optolong filters were the, uh, that I used were the red, green, and blue, and the H-alpha. Now I wanted to give you a little background on this image and how it uh, came to be. So let's go over to Picton site and we'll have a closer look at the data. All right, so this is the finished image of IC59 and IC63. IC59 is located right here in this part of the nebula, and IC63 is right here. And if you do, if you have a look uh, close up, it does look like a phantom ghost-like figure uh, floating in space there. So just an interesting point to make, the IC63 uh, nebula region here is actually uh, being shaped by the radiation from uh, the variable star uh, Gamma Cassiopeia. So the radiation that's uh, being emitted from this bright blue star is actually shaping this nebula region here. Um, it's, it's slowly eroding away uh, the ghostly cloud actually, which is quite interesting. So who knows what this will look like uh, come uh, many generations from now, uh, thousands of years or millions of years from now, this uh, could completely change and not even exist anymore. So really, really fascinating to be able to capture this data and uh, take a look into the past. Anyways, who knows what it looks like now because we are technically looking at the past when we uh, look up at the night sky and uh, we take uh, images. Uh, the light that we collect is from the past. This is actually, this object is located uh, 550 light years apart approximately from Earth. So uh, not not a far distance in astronomical terms, but uh, 550 uh, years old, uh, the light that you're looking at here in this image uh, uh, was when I collected it. So uh, extremely, extremely fascinating stuff. And it is located, as I've mentioned, in the constellation of Cassiopeia. The bright star Gamma Cassiopeia right here, um, this is the one that's notorious for causing the internal reflections in telescopes and cameras for some astrophotographers. So the, the, the bluish gray uh, of the nebula is the reflection part and the red is the emission part of the nebula. So if I take you back a step, this is the RGB data that I collected. So this is the, the broadband data. And um, I haven't done anything to it. This is simply the, uh, the masters, the RG and the B masters uh, combined. So there's been no cropping, there's been no dynamic background or anything done. And you can see um, where it, it started and where it ended up. So this is where it ended up. And this is where it started. So this is about seven hours and 40 minutes of data. And the balance of the 13 and a half hours is uh, H alpha. This is the H alpha data that I collected. You can see there's a much stronger response in H alpha than there is in the um, in the broadband uh, wavelengths. So 
uh, very important when you're imaging this uh, object if you do want to image it if you're if you're looking to image something that's really interesting and cool to process uh, definitely gather some H alpha data if you can so if you're using a monochrome setup that's easy to do uh, you just shoot through your H alpha filter and you shoot through your RGB filters to get the broadband data if you're shooting one shot color uh, it's gonna be a little more challenging but what you could do is shoot your your color data with your uh, one-shot color camera and then insert something like the uh, uh, Optolong L Extreme filter to capture the uh, H alpha emission nebula uh, signal that's coming from this uh, nebula region and then you could combine those two in PixInsight or the program of your choice uh, that you use for image processing but uh, you could combine those two uh, data sets and uh, come up with a, an image that's going to be uh, really fantastic as well so there was a number of steps that I went through to process this. It wasn't actually as bad as I thought. Um, it, it When I first saw it, I was a little concerned because the stars, the number of stars is overwhelming in the image. So I wasn't sure how it was going to play out. But it actually worked out not too bad. Uh, basically, I just did um, some dynamic background. Well, I cropped it first, but then I did dynamic background extraction on it. And uh, I did a color calibration. And... Then I proceeded to do some noise reduction on it. The noise wasn't terrible. Um, you can see there is some noise present though in the image. And uh, not, not a lot though. The QHY268M is actually very low read noise. So I'm really impressed with this camera. The noise was easy to clean up and smooth out. So I did that, did some noise reduction. And then I basically did uh, some more processing. I stretched the image and uh, and started doing some tweaking with it in terms of uh, the histogram and the curves transformation. And I also did some color saturation, of course, to uh, bring out the color in the uh, nebula. Um, I used a star mask. I don't typically like to separate my image into stars and starless by using StarNet. I know a lot of people do that. I don't really like doing that. I've never really been completely thrilled with with StarNet's removal of stars, it um, they they don't look that great. They look kind of ugly, actually, if you uh, have a really close inspection on them. So I don't typically like to extract using StarNet if I can avoid it. Um, so what I do in this case is I create masks, and um, a star mask such as this one here was one that I used. So this actually allows me to do two things. It allows me to um, work on the stars uh, separately from the rest of the image, but it also allows me to protect the stars when I want to focus on um, other areas of the image to uh, tweak. So that uh, that's a great example there. The uh, Bright Star Gamma Cassiopeia, I did create a mask using the game mask in PixInsight and this was applied to the image so that I could work strictly on the, ga on the uh, Gamma Cassiopeia star. And what I did there was I used the uh, HDR multi-scale transform tool to target this and try and um, knock back uh, a bit of the overwhelming brightness that it uh, has happening, uh, just simply due to the fact it's a, an extremely bright star. And uh, that worked out not too bad. But like I said, it wasn't perfect. Um, if we zoom in here, we can sort of see it's not uh, it's not perfect. Um, it did tame itself pretty good though, overall, um, in the image acquisition side of it and also the processing side of it. it. It turned out pretty good. If I just flip back to the finished product here and have a look at it, I tried not to blow it out um, any further anymore. So that's not so bad. Um, I was actually pretty happy with that considering the difficulty of this target and the brightness of this star. I was actually really happy with this result for uh, Gamma Cassiopeia. So there you have it. That is the ghost of Cassiopeia. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks very much for tuning in and I will see you in another video really soon. For now, take care and clear skies everyone. Thank you.